In a village, Sagar and Manav were two friends. Sagar was a nice guy, but Manav was a greedy kind of guy. They both had tea stalls, but their profits were nothing special. One day, Sagar goes to meet his cousin Soham. Hey Sagar, how are you? Is everything all right at home? I am fine, brother, and everything at home is fine. It's just that my business isn't going so well. Hey brother, if your business is not going so well, why don't you try some other business? You are correct, but what business should I start? There are already a lot of people in the market who do various types of business. Sagar, I have an idea. Sister-in-law makes such a good pulao. So why don't you sell her handmade pulao? You will get a very good price because people have never eaten such a delicious pulao. Oh yes, Soham, this is a brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of it earlier? After talking to Soham, Sagar left for home. Sagar's wife used to make very delicious pulao. From the next day, Sagar followed Soham's idea. He set up a stall in the market and started selling pulao. Everyone who came to his shop liked pulao very much. And now Sagar started to earn really good money. Seeing all of this, Sagar is achieving so much day by day. I too must do something. The next day, Manav opens a stall near Sagar's shop and begins selling pulao at a very low rate. Sagar's customer started gathering at Manav's stall buying pulao. Seeing all of this happening, Sagar feels disheartened. Sagar went to a distant village and started doing his business. Manav used to make good profits because now Sagar was out of the picture, but he was never satisfied. No matter how much money he had, but as humans we are never satisfied with our situation. Right now no one will be able to compete with me. Even if I gradually cut on the pulao, no one will notice and I will still outperform everyone. After all, nobody is here to judge me in comparison. The following day, Manav cut back on the amount of pulao prepared and started serving less to the populace. However, it wasn't long before people realized that Manav had cut back on the pulao. Due to this reason, customers were no longer visiting Manav's stall. After a few days, Sagar learned that no one was buying pulao from Manav. So he returned back to his village and he started selling pulao as he did previously. Due to lack of buyer, Manav's stall had now been closed. Manav, you should not be greedy. Look what it made you do. Look where your greed has brought you. I have made a mistake, Sagar. I did wrong to you. Please forgive me, if possible. Oh, no problem. We are friends and no apologies are allowed in friendship. You realized your mistake, which is a very good thing. I have already forgiven you. Manav, I was thinking, why don't we sell Palau together? Sagar, you are really generous. You still save me favorably despite everything I did to you. Thank you, friend. Hey, Manav, what are friends for after all? May God bless everyone with a friend like you. From the very next day, Manav and Sagar together started selling pulao in the village. Seeing both of them working together, the people of the village started coming to their stall. Gradually, their business went from one village to another and both the friends always lived together and did their business very well without being selfish. Once there was a man named John who used to live in a village named Belmont. He lived with his wife Mary and his daughter Alicia. John used to work on a farm nearby. After working in the afternoon, the workers at the farm used to sit at a nearby place to eat their lunch together. Oh John, what did you bring for lunch today? I brought parantas. What did you bring? I brought chapati and vegetables. Brother, the parantas from your house are very delicious. I always want to eat them. You can eat them if you like, brother Richard. I will eat your lunch. Richard and John finish their work and then go back to their homes. After coming back from work, John says to Mary, Hey Mary, your parantas are really delicious. Everyone loves them. Really? That night, there was a robbery at the farm owner's house. The next day, John and everyone else get together at the farm owner's house. Since all the money and jewellery was stolen, the farm owner did not have any money left. Because of this, he could not pay wages to all the workers. Brothers, 
because of the robbery i cannot pay you your monthly wages you can stop coming to my farms from now sir please don't do this to us john if you work at my farms then i would have to give you something but i don't have anything left yes sir whatever is suitable to you now you can go if i will need you i will call you all yes sir all the farm workers go back to their homes some of them found work at other farms but john could not find any work many days passed and john was still at home what should be done so that we can pay for our household expenses hey what happened you have been thinking for the past 15 days and are not even eating properly it's nothing just thinking about how to pay for our household expenses i must find some money don't worry we can do something stop thinking about it the next day mary had an idea she tells her husband i have an idea what if we sell the parathas that i make yes your idea is very good let's start selling parathas from tomorrow itself but mary it will require a lot of help and effort from you you don't have to worry about that i will take care of everything the next day john and mary go to the market to sell the parathas and chutney they made since there was already a parantha seller in the market they could not sell much of the parathas they gave all the remaining parathas to an orphanage and returned home nobody is buying our parathas what should we do now what will happen if you think like this today was the first day only and you are disappointed be patient those who try never give up the next day she prepares the parathas early and john and mary go to their shop to sell them again some of the parathas were made at home and the rest of them were made fresh there only the fragrance of her parathas attracted a lot of people and there was a crowd how many parathas would you like sir john give me 10 parathas with lots of butter yes sir i will add a lot of butter their parathas were now loved by a lot of people slowly their business started growing now their shop was so crowded that their parathas started falling short people were mad about their parathas one day the richest man of their village winson came to their shop and told john john i have some work will you do it yes i will do it tell what is it tomorrow is my son's birthday as you know there is a feast every year for the whole village i am thinking if you could make parathas for this birthday party we will do it sir you don't have to worry about it can we do it mary yes we can do it that day john and mary went back to their homes and started thinking how can we make so many parathas i was thinking the same if we cannot complete the order our name and winson's reputation will be hurt we have to fulfill the promise we made yes but how can we make parathas for the whole village let's go to sleep and see to it in the morning then suddenly their house was filled with a lot of light both of them were scared to see the light who is this where is all the light coming from who is it show yourself a shape formed in that light and stood in front of them they were even more scared now then they heard a sound from the shape don't be scared john and mary i am god i am here to help you john and mary joined their hands and said Oh god we are lucky that we got to see you we are blessed that you came to our home john ask for what you want i am very happy with both of you god we have everything we wish for but we are worried about how we are going to fulfill tomorrow's order i am really happy to see both of your pure intentions take this magical parantha you will get whatever you ask from it mary and john thank the god and god disappears before giving the magical parantha in john's hands mary we will cook food from this parantha tomorrow yes we will do this only john and mary go to the birthday party tomorrow morning john tells the magical parantha oh magical parantha make 2000 parantas for me now suddenly 2000 parantas appear because of the magical parantha the fragrance was so good that everyone ate them happily winson's guests were very happy with the parantas 
John and Mary were happy watching this. Watching his guests so happy, Winston was also pleased. He tells the both of them, John and Mary, both of you are wonderful. Everyone here loved the food. Here is your money. Thank you, sir. We are really happy that you trusted us with it. We will always be grateful to you. Thank you, Mr. Winston. John and Mary happily returned home and thanked the God. They started selling different types of parantas at their shop. They were very successful because of that magical paranta. They were known as paranta maker John and Mary throughout the village. Hey, hey, what is all this? Move away from the front. Can't you see that Pappu Pandey has come? Well, who is Pappu Pandey? It's me. Who else? Now don't show your teeth. Huh? Get out of the front. Our customer is getting late. In his own time, Pappu Pandey used to get engaged in everything. He used to flaunt in the village's corner, where he used to bluff up big things. Last year, I had a tourist passenger in my auto. I travelled across Agra with him. I saw the Taj Mahal, slept in a big hotel. And you know that foreigner didn't go anywhere without me. <laughs> this is Pappu Pandey. Is it so? <laughs> what do you think? And just then, another auto driver came there. Brother, have you heard or not? What? The government has made a rule that from today, all the autos will run according to the meter. Oh God! What will we do now? That's what we have been doing till now. What? Huh, now you watch. Now, Pappu Pandey decided that he would now bluff around with the passengers. Brother, will you go to Lakshmi Chowk? Yes, madam. But with the meter, right? Yes, ma'am. Everyone now drives by the meter. This is the new rule of government. After going a short distance, Pappu took a left turn instead of right. Madam, there is a lot of traffic there. Don't worry. This is a shortcut. Okay. Pappu reached Lakshmi Chowk after taking the longer route all around. Ma'am, it's 80 rupees. But Lakshmi Chowk fare is only 50 rupees. We used to take that. But now the government rule says we have to take money according to the meter. The woman checked the meter and gave the money to Pappu. Pappu was very happy. In the evening, Pappu reached the village corner. Oh man, this meter has ruined our business. Yours, not mine. I have found a solution. It's Pappu Pandey. Pappu told them everything. Yes, that's right. Mm, from today, we will do the same. From the next day, the auto drivers tried Pappu's idea and those drivers also started taking the long routes. This went on for several days. Then the passengers complained to the traffic officers. The traffic officers set out to nab these robbers. One traffic officer sat in Pappu's auto. Lakshmi Chok. Okay, sir. Pappu started taking the longer ride as usual and the officer sitting behind him started taking note of all of this. Finally, Pappu reached Lakshmi Chowk. 70 rupees. Not 70. It's 7,000 rupees and three months of jail. Pappu had to go to lockup due to his greed. That too with all of his friends. There used to be a man named John in a village named Sitara. He was a very smart man. John had his own laundry shop. He used to wash and iron clothes for people in it. And that's why John became very famous. He used to get clothes from all the big houses of the village. John was assisted by his wife Rosa. They had a daughter. Her name was Sarah. Sarah was a very good-hearted girl. She always helped the one in need. She never said no to anyone for help. Her kindness was known in the village. A lot of people used to get their work done by showing her their helplessness. Now, one day John says to his daughter, Daughter, this good-natured behavior can be deadly sometimes. Father, if I help someone, then the reward will be for me only, right? 
That is why I always do good deeds. It is beyond my capacity to explain you. Yes, let's go and eat food, father. Yes, let's go. Now, all three of them eat the food. They go to sleep after the meal. The next day, Rosa and Sara wake up early and finish all the chores around the house. But John does not wake up early today. Sara goes to her father to wake him up. Father, wake up now. Your body is burning with fever. Mom, come here fast. What happened? He did not wake up yet. Mom, father has a high fever. See, he is not waking up. Oh yes, we have to take him to the hospital. Hurry up. Yes, mom, let's go. Now Sara and Rosa takes John to the hospital. After reaching hospital, the doctor checks him and says to Sara, "He is got typhoid because of high fever. We have to keep him under observation now." Doctor, is there anything to worry about? No. It will take time to get well. Okay, doctor. You look after him and give him a proper treatment. I'll arrange for the money. Okay, you may go now. Sara gets her father admitted to the hospital and asks her mother to stay in the hospital to look after him. Mom, you stay here with father. I will go home and arrange for some money. Don't worry. Carefully, daughter, and look after yourself. Yes, mom. I'll go now. Now Sara leaves from there and comes home thinking that what should i do to get some money suddenly her father's iron catches her attention she thinks that she will do this work from now because she needed money she starts ironing the clothes and irons all the clothes in one night and goes to sleep the next day sara wakes up early and finishes all the chores and brings clothes that her father brought for ironing back to the people now everyone is looking at her with surprise and one man said daughter why did you bring the clothes today uncle i will do this work from now on because my father is not well and i need the money that's why i will do my father's work do you have any objections no no daughter why would i have any objection it's good for all be a bit careful with these people these people mismatch with calculations i will be cautious i'll leave now sara leaves after taking the money from the man and after returning all the ironed clothes back she brings home clothes to wash she washes the clothes and hangs them to dry then irons them at night many days passed like this Sara does her work very faithfully. She keeps the track of all the clothes she gets from people and that she returned. That's why she faced no problems with the calculations. One day Joshua says to her, "I owe you 100 rupees for my clothes and you are saying 150. It's too much." "You owe me 150 rupees for the clothes you have given to me. You can see the calculations." I can show you the count for everyday clothes too. Joshua gets to know that Sara is telling him the calculations after noting it down. Seeing this, he says, "Oh daughter, I thought it was 100 rupees. Here you are 150 rupees and to this clothes." Sara counts the clothes and takes them home. And at the end of the month, she collects the money from people. After taking the money, she goes home and counts. Sara has collected ten thousand rupees. Sara takes the money and goes to the hospital. After admitting in hospital, her father is getting much better now. Seeing this, Sara was very happy. But nurse stops Sara outside and calls her. Madam, your bill is ready. Should I give it to you? Madam, how much is the bill? Please tell me. Madam 24000 you have to pay it till tomorrow because your father will be discharged tomorrow okay madam let me see after saying this sara meets her parents and leaves for home she reaches home and thinks how would i arrange this much money what should i do i can't think of anything sara was thinking about all this and then suddenly 
her iron started rushing gold sara saw this and she got scared she said this is magic who did this i am your iron you can speak yes sara i am happy with your hard work that's why i am giving this gold take this and pay the hospital bills for your father take this gold and sell it to buy medicine if you need more just ask for it you will never fall short of money iron gives gold and stops talking the voice stops sara could not believe her eyes she picks up the gold in her hand and saw that the gold is real she gets very happy sara goes and sells the gold to the goldsmith and pays the hospital bill using that money and gets some medicines as well sara's parents thank god after listening to all this they bless their daughter and john says i am very lucky to have a daughter like you and i thank god for all this the entire family lives happily together and they never fall short of money they live life easily all this happened because of the gold rushing iron